Okay, in this video, we're continuing our discussion of AUC Section 250 um, for the considerations of laws and regulations and a financial statement audit. And for this video, I want to uh, discuss the responsibilities for compliance with laws and regulations. And first, I want to say what's the responsibility of management and then what's the respons responsibility of us, the auditor. So at first, it says it's the responsibility of management um, with the oversight of those sorts of governance to ensure that the entity's operations are conducted in accordance with provisions of laws and regulations, including compliance with provisions of laws and regulations that determine reported amounts and disclosures and, and, and these financial statements. So with that said, management of our client needs to make sure that they comply with all the laws and regulations and also that the financial statements reflect um, amounts or disclosures that are in line with um, results of non-compliance if they haven't complied with laws, for instance, um, uh, liabilities for penalties or uh, something like that. So anyway, our responsibility, as we know, is to identify material misstatements of the financial statements due to um, non-compliance with laws and regulations. Therefore, um, it's not our responsibility to prevent non-compliance. We saw that's um, management's responsibility. And also, we can't be expected to detect all non-compliance with all laws and regulations. Um, we're expected to um, detect material misstatements due to um, non-compliance with laws and regulations, but not necessarily um, non-compliance with laws and regulations directly. So as we, we learned um, at the beginning of, of these audit sections, um, our responsibility is to obtain reasonable assurance that the financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatement, whether it caused by fraud or error. And therefore, when we're conducting our audit, um, we need to take into account applicable legal and regulatory frameworks um, because the inherent limitations of the audit, uh, there certainly are unavoidable risks um, that the material, there are material misstatements in the financial statements that we don't detect, even if we properly plan and perform the audit in accordance with all of these AUC sections. So in that context, um, the potential effects of inherent limitations on our ability to detect material misstatements are greater for the following reasons. Many laws and regulations relating principally to the operating aspects of an entity typically do not affect the financial statements that are not captured by the entity's information systems. Uh, relevant to financial reporting, non-compliance might involve conduct designed to conceal it, such as collusion, forgery, deliberate failure to record transactions, etc. And whether an act constitutes non-compliance is ultimately a matter for legal determination, such as by a court of law. So, worst case scenario, the entity could be um, in not, not in compliance with laws and regulations that make its entire business shut down. Um, in that case, certainly the financial statements would be misstated because all the accounts are under the assumption that it's going to be uh, continuing operating. Also, it may be difficult for us to detect um, certain things that are, are fraudulent in nature, as we see here with these examples. And also, we're, we're not attorneys, so we don't necessarily um, know for certain if our compliance or, or clients are completely in, in compliance with, with the laws and regulations. And we have no idea how a court might um, determine that verdict. So in general, it's a, a pretty big estimate and not really a certainty. So we really wouldn't know what liability to place on the balance sheet or to disclose related to the results of um, non-compliance. So, uh, so further away from the financial statements um, this non-compliance is, um, the less likely we're um, going to find or detect it. So um, with that said, our responsibility, um, according to our procedures related to laws and regulations of the entity, uh, fall into two categories. It is the provisions of those laws and regulations generally recognized to have a direct effect on the determination of material amounts and disclosures in the financial statements such as tax and pension laws and regulations and the provisions of laws and or provisions of other laws and regulations that do not have a direct effect on the determination of the amounts and disclosures in the financial statements but compliance with which may be fundamental to operating aspects of the business fundamental to an entity's ability to continue its business and necessary for the entity to avoid material penalties so we'll get into those different types later on in the videos but there will be different requirements for each of those two categories so for instance the first category um, that is the specific um, but the uh, provisions of laws and regulations have a direct effect on the determination of material amounts and disclosures, for instance, tax and penalties, the laws and regulations. We're required to um, obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence regarding material amounts and disclosures and the financial statements that are determined by the provisions of those laws and regulations. Uh, but for the second category, the ones that are more general in nature, our responsibility is limited to performing specified audit procedures that may identify non-compliance with those laws and regulations that may have a direct material effect on the financial statement. So we don't necessarily have to do... Um, specific procedures related to these because they're, they're generic laws, for instance, maybe employment laws or something that, that is uh, uh, common to all businesses for the most part. So we really only need to narrow down specific procedures to these ones that have direct material um, effects on our financial statements. And also we're required by the section to remain alert to the possibility that other audit procedures applied for the purpose of forming an opinion on the financial statements may bring instances of identified or suspected non-compliance laws and regulations to our attention. Therefore, as noted in AUC section 200, we need to maintain professional skepticism throughout the audit so we can uh, maintain awareness for those types of items. And this is important given the con extent of laws and regulations that um, affect most entities. So um, that gives us a good over overall view of how this AUC section is going to be structured. And in the next several videos, we'll go through each of the standards or each of the requirements. 
But first, let's go through our responsibilities and management's responsibilities um, for compliance with laws and regulations in the um, explan other explanatory materials section. And to, to continue on with the responsibilities of management, we remember that it's the responsibility of management with oversight of those charged with governance to ensure that any of these operations are conducted in accordance with laws and regulations. And that's because the laws and regulations can affect the entity's financial statements in different ways. For example, most directly, they may affect specific disclosures required of the entity in the financial statements, or they may prescribe the applicable financial reporting framework. Um, they also may establish certain legal rights and obligations of the entity, some of which will be recognized in the entity's financial statements. And additional laws and regulations may provide for the imposition of penalties in cases of non-compliance. So, for instance, um, these laws and regulations might prescribe the regulatory basis of accounting, so that tells us that it prescribes the applicable financial reporting framework for the entity. And um, instances, for instance, when the um, entity receives um, federal government funds um, in excess of a certain threshold, they may be required to have a certain type of audit. Um, so non-compliance with those types of um, laws and regulations could have a big financial effect on the company. So some of the um, types of policies and procedures that management can implement to assist in preventing detection, uh, preventing and detecting non-compliance with laws and regulations could include each of these bullet points. Um, they can monitor the legal requirements and ensure that uh, their procedures are designed to meet those requirements. They could institute and operate appropriate systems of internal control, um, codes of ethics and code of conduct. They could train people appropriately, monitoring the compliance with that code of ethics or um, the policies. They can engage legal advisors to assist in monitoring the legal requirements and maintaining a register of significant laws and regulations that are relevant to its industry. Um, and so in larger entities, there might be entire teams of people that need to um, perform these functions, for instance, an internal audit team, audit committee, uh, legal function, and compliance function. So uh, if the rule of laws and regulations get really complex and the entity is really big, um, you might have to add more people and to make sure that they follow them um, appropriately. And that was management's responsibility. As far as our responsibility, as we discussed in, um, in the requirements above, um, the inherent limitations of an audit um, include those related to um, non-compliance with laws and regulations. And so um, non-compliance by an entity um, with laws and regulations might result in material misstatements of financial statements and detection of non-compliance. Regardless of materiality, may affect other aspects of the audit. Um, for example, consideration of integrity of management or employees and non-compliance can result from fraudulent activity. So if it turns out that um, non-compliance results from management not having a high level of integrity, then that may uh, spread across other accounts and the company's financial statements and the pervasiveness may create a really big misstatement, even though um, the one we notice might be um, fairly small. And as we notice, or noted above, we're not attorneys or, or lawyers, so um, we don't necessarily know for certain the uh, legal or compliance ramifications of, of certain things. And, and also we don't know how um, financially that affects the entity um, for certain because we're not we're not attorneys, but our training and experience and understanding of the entity and industry um, sh should provide a basis to recognize some acts that are um, non-compliance with laws and regulations. And, and if it becomes necessary, we, we might consult with um, people within or outside our firm who are knowledgeable about the non-compliance um, issues that we're facing. In addition, with uh, in accordance with specific statutory requirements, um, we might be required to report specifically on the entity's compliance with laws or regulations, and those come from AUC Section 806 and 935. And we'll get to videos on those later on down the road. So if the client is specifically required to um, have an audit that reports on their compliance, then we would need to follow those sections. And this relates to government entities too. Auditors of governmental entities may have additional responsibilities with respect to consideration of laws and regulations, which relate to the audit of financial statements or may extend to other aspects of the entity's operations. So um, this AUC Section 250 that we're going through now is more related to um, general procedures and requirements to determine whether or not there are material misstatements due to compliant, non-compliance with laws and regulations and not specifically to for the result of determining whether an entity is or not is not in compliance. And the, these sections right here are more appropriate for that task.